just a shame. When I was growing up, I watched a cartoon in elementary school about people who would, who would trade cheese for chickens in order to trade the chickens for a pile of rocks, in order to trade the rocks for a cow that they wanted to eat for their dinner. It could be about gardens. It could be about all different kinds of flowers. Um, the, the cartoon, the purpose of it was to explain why we have money, because it takes so much time to, to, to trade and so much work just to trade the different things with different people so that you can trade the thing that the person wants who has what you want in order to get what you want. Birthdays and gift giving. And that made sense to me. It made sense why we'd have money, even though it didn't seem like it's much fun. It seemed a lot more, the, the people in the cartoon were having a lot more fun trading things than I do when I go to the store and give some money or swipe my credit card in order to get um, whatever good it is I want. Um, it could be about characters who possess tulips like, I don't know, fairies or elves or gnomes or... There are people, I am told, who do things with money in order to create more money. They, um, money no longer is a stand-in for any sort of service or any sort of um, good. It's just uh, something people use in order to create more of it for themselves or to get more of it for themselves. And it's very confusing. It's something, there's, a, there's a lot of these fi financial instruments that don't make a lot of sense to me until I came upon this wonderful game which simplified at least some part of some of the arcane machinations that are going on. Something else, but it's really just about tulips, buying and selling tulips, and I think that's um, novel and nice. And that game is Tulip Mania 1637. Oh, to live in the world of tulips. In Tulip Mania 1637, players are going to take on the role of Uber investors during what was purportedly the first bubble market in 1637, uh, buying and selling tulips solely for the purpose of driving up the price of the tulips that they own and that they have buyers for in order that they might make a huge profit. It's a simple game, but it is intelligent. So in the game, players are going to have tulips of different colors, and they're going to have buyers who are willing to buy tulips of that color. For whatever reason, these buyers are particular to tulips of that color and they trust you so much because you're so upstanding and fiscally well off that they believe that you are going to give them great advice as to when to buy the tulip of the color that they want to buy and for how much to buy it for. Players are going to take turns being the, the player who gets to sell a tulip. So the main thing you're going to do when it's your turn to sell a tulip is you're going to pick a tulip and put it right in the palm of this hand here, which is one of my favorite parts of the game, so I, I should probably show you this up close. You've got to be paying attention. You, you have to have a strategy. You have to be noticing what other people are doing because otherwise you're going to have a whole bunch of yellow, yellow tulips and they're not going to be worth anything. Or um, you're going to have over-invested in red and all of a sudden blue become hot but you don't have enough blue. But everyone else is going to decide whether they want to buy the tulip or not or get someone else to buy the tulip or speculate on the tulip. That's done in secret. Now depending on what it eventually happens with the tulip sell, whether someone buys it or not, the, the price of that tulip is going to go up or it's going to drop. So if someone has decided to buy the tulip, it's going to go up by these green arrows. If someone decides to speculate on the tulip, however, it's going to go up on the gold arrows, which means it shoots up. It means they're, they're, they're purchasing it for way more than it's worth in order to get the price to go up, which makes the tulip more valuable, uh, and essentially you'd be able to sell it for more later. Like things are just going along, progressing. You're an investor, you're buying, you're selling, you're, you're uh, you know, building this inventory of, of various colors of tulips and then, and then it kind of feels like all of a sudden it's all coming down and you're either on, on the right side of the avalanche or you're on the wrong side of the avalanche. To understand what you're trying to do in the game, you have to understand what happens when a tulip of a particular color bursts. So a tulip 
bursts, a color of tulips bursts when it reaches this top row here. So as soon as that happens, anyone who has a tulip of that color and a buyer of that color gets the high payout, but just once. And then it goes down and anyone who has another tulip of that color and another buyer of that color gets the next highest payout. And so on until someone doesn't have any more buyers who are into that color. And then anyone who has a tulip of just that color gets a payout and so on until you get down, down, down. And then the those those people who just have no tulips don't get any money on the color. After a tulip bursts, it's removed from the game and you continue to play until there is just two colors of tulips left, in which case the last tulip to burst, the other color just gets paid out as it it's is. It's not just one avalanche. It's, it's not just one climax. It, there's a climax and then there's sort of a plateau and then there's another climax and and then suddenly it's the end of the game. And the game doesn't go on forever. It is strange to me that in a game about finance, the money is is the, the part that I would have the biggest complaint about. Not the fact that there is money. I think that makes a lot of sense. But for one, the game is not super silly game. Uh, but it, it, they, they, the company felt the need to put this brand on it, this rather cartoony brand. I like the name JKLM, and I don't think it's a bad logo, but I don't think it's fitting with the whole feel of the game. And I think to put the branding in in front of, I understand the, the concept behind brandy but to put that in front of the actual uh, piece that you're trying to make the, the work that you're trying to accomplish I think is silly it, it's like those little Google or those YouTube ads at the bottom of the screen sure it makes sense that you have the advertisement there but in the end in the end it, it covers up what you're trying to show people what they're what's what sort of good you're trying to give them. Um, so that's silly. And also, it, it, there's not enough of it. What was it like to live when tulips were this hot commodity? Was it, was it more beautiful at all than now when you buy and sell other things? I'd like to know that. And, and when people were buying and selling tulips and and um, basically they were like money. Did they think that the tulips were as special as we might think the tulips are, or, or as special as I think tulips are, or, or as beautiful as tulips appear? Or did they just become like this, this object that uh, symbolizes money or value? So did they become less beautiful in that time?